and welcome back to Open Your Eyes on this lovely Wednesday morning. We're about to venture off now into our first conversation for the morning, uh, the U.S. Embassy on U.S. International Relations. And uh, in with us to talk about it, we've got Keith Gilgis. He's actually the U.S. Charge of Affairs out of the U.S. Embassy here in Belize, actually in the capital city of Belmopan. Keith. Good morning, sir. Happy New Year and welcome. Happy New Year to you as well, Marlene and John, uh, uh, and to all of your viewers and all Belizeans. I just wish you a, a happy, healthy, safe, yeah. and prosperous New Year. Yeah, you sound, you, you sound exactly like one of us. Now, you're Belizean now. Uh, you know that, right? <laughs> well, I certainly, you know, I was just on vacation in the States for a little while and, mm -hmm. and two weeks, had a great time with my family skiing. But I got to tell you, every time I touch down in Belize, I'm just thrilled to be back. Nice. <laughs> so let's jump on into it. Uh, firstly, we want to touch on, um, we know the situation and what it is like today in the world and uh, how the U.S. have got uh, uh, basically the world talking as we speak. What's going on right now, international relations, really internationally, probably you want to touch on the Iran situation? We want to get there? Well, definitely. I think yeah. we need to start with an update. There were big developments the uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, the world is awaiting to hear from President Trump. Yeah. So let's start off with that. Well, sure. Well, listen, uh, thanks for the invitation to come yeah. and, and speak on this issue. And, and as always, I'm happy to cover the entire range of things. When I was first on here a year and a half ago, I said, let's make sure this is a conversation that we continue to have. And so yeah. it's been about six months since I was here. So, so thanks for the invitation back. Sure. You know. Um, clearly, things are moving quickly in Iran. Uh, last night, we saw a series of attacks against uh, two U.S. bases there. We don't believe that there were any casualties. We are still assessing the damage. Yeah. Um, but there was, there, was, there was significant damage that, that happened. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that the Iranians have put out a statement saying, you know, we are not planning to retaliate further mm -hmm. if the U.S. doesn't. So, um, again, uh, I await the similar guidance and, and to hear what the, the president has to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I know his objective is not to create a war. His objective is to enhance stability, is mm -hmm. to create a world that is, is prosperous and free. Mm -hmm. When we are attacked, we will respond. And certainly that was the case with the attack on our, our base a few days ago, or, yeah. or two weeks ago on the 27th, um, when those rockets came in and killed a U.S. contractor and wounded several service members, mm. yeah. you know, we responded yeah. and we will continue to in those incidents. Mm. Now, it, it's been just within the past two weeks, and I, I'm glad you brought that up, that I think the focus has been on U.S. US and Iran relations. Um, however, it is a long history. It's just been kind of out of sight, out of mind for the public at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the actions that have taken place, I'd, I'd like to kind of just do a chronology of mm -hmm. how things have been going, mm -hmm. because it's important for us to understand now. The, the rest of the world, are cons is, we're concerned about things like war. We're concerned of loss of life, uh, impact, impact in countries uh, that perhaps are not involved. And we heard uh, of what would potentially be escalation efforts outside of Iran uh, if the US was to respond. So let's start with that chronology. Yeah, so, so looking back a little bit um, in, a, in the chronology, you know, we went into Iraq in 2003 mm -hmm. um, uh, and helped liberate Iraq from, from Saddam Hussein. By 2011, we had withdrawn all our troops from Iraq. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there was no agreement with the, with the government at the time on a, the status of our forces, yeah. and so we withdrew. We maintained an embassy there, yeah. but we no longer had any boots on the ground. Mm. Within three years, ISIS had taken 20,000 square miles of territory in Iraq and Syria. Wow. And so we were invited back in as part of a multinational coalition of forces mm -hmm. to disrupt, dismantle, and ultimately defeat ISIS. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call Operation Inherent Resolve. That is the base that we have. And we've got about 5,000 troops still there. So yeah. ISIS has been defeated. It's not dead. It's still there. Mm -hmm. um, part of the challenge for us was, when we had a common enemy um, with Iran, Iran was fighting ISIS as well. Yeah. When ISIS was defeated, they started turning their rockets back on us. Mm. And that was the attack, 30 rockets into the base in, uh, in Kirkuk in northern Iraq. Mm. And for that, we had to respond. And we did, with targeted attacks, three in Iraq, two in Syria, against um, Iranian-backed proxy forces, yeah. the mm -hmm. Kitaib 
Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. and so we attacked those forces, also part of the popular mobilization forces, the militias yeah. in Iraq. Um, in response to that, they did this to our embassy. Again, it's Iranian-backed proxy forces mm. that, are, that are attacking. Mm -hmm. uh, so on January 2nd, uh, the president made the decision to go after the mastermind of these attacks, mm. which was General Soleimani. Mm -hmm. mm. No, and this is why I said in the past two weeks it's important to look at the chronology because it's kind of just been uh, uh, an action and then a reaction from either side. Um, the assassination of General Soleimani um, has definitely been a, a key trigger. And in fact, um, many have looked at the decision to, to make that attack um, as one that was very bold and perhaps the writing was on the wall that there would have been some sort of, of response. The goal of all of our actions is to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. But when attacked, we will respond. Yes. And it is targeted, it is specific, and it is on purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we hit the target we meant to hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the idea is not that it goes beyond this. Yeah. You know, We want to say, listen, it is in everybody's interest mm -hmm. that Iraq is peaceful, is stable, is sovereign mm -hmm. from outside influences. Mm -hmm. And Iran is constantly using its proxy forces in Iraq for purposes of instability, for purposes of yeah. chaos, and they want to create basically a vassal state mm -hmm. um, in Iraq for Iran. Yeah. That's not what we see. But again, our forces are there, and the yeah. 5,000 troops we have are there to ensure that ISIS does not rise again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and we continue uh, at the invitation of the Iraqi government to be there. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, it's funny enough that uh, the leader of Iran is actually saying one of the things that, they're, that they want and their people want is for U.S. forces to get out of the area. And they're saying that uh, because of this is when we've got the heightened, uh, heightened hostility in the area. Do you think that there will be any consideration for the U.S. to actually move out of the Middle East on a whole? The, the, the reason that we have those troops in Iraq right now is because of ISIS. Mm. We left in 2011, and as I said, by 2014, ISIS had taken over huge, huge um, portions of Iraq and Syria. Yeah. So we continue with that mission. That is why we are there. Yeah. Um, uh, while Iran says, sure, we would like all U.S. troops out of the whole region, because they wish to extend their own influence in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and to have, and, and they continue in their escapades, whether it's in Yemen or in Syria and other places, through their proxies to create instability and chaos. Mm -hmm. That's not in our interest, that's not in Belize's interest, yeah, that's yeah. not in the interest of the, the international community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the biggest concern is just how do you avoid escalation at this point? And that's why I, I started off by saying the world is waiting to hear mm -hmm. what the US response will be. Um, Iran has essentially said, well, we have responded to the attack of last week, um, and we feel that we don't need to escalate. But if you do, we've already we're decided where our targets are going to be. Yeah. So at this point, I can't get ahead of the president. I know. And uh, you know, ultimately, it will be his decision how we respond. But all these, it is, it is considered, it is proportionate, it is saying, how do we respond in a way that says, we're not backing down, yeah. but we do want to de-escalate. We are looking for peace. We are looking for stability in the region. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I will be listening uh, as closely as everybody else yeah. um, to the president's remarks later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the indications, I think, based on uh, what he has said so far, mostly through Twitter, um, do you feel that it is perhaps the intention of the, of the administration at this time to not have escalation take place? Again, I, I, I don't want to speculate about what the president may or may not say, yeah. but the goal is stability. Mm -hmm. The goal is to de-escalate. And his comments and the comments of Secretary Pompeo were very clear that we've taken the actions we've taken to try and reduce instability, mm. not to enhance it. We want to de-escalate. We don't want to get into a war. This yeah. is not a president that wants to go to war. He, you know, when he campaigned, uh, years ago and through his term, he's interested in focusing on domestic issues. He's not interested in being involved in, in a myriad of international uh, uh, you know, arenas. Mm -hmm. But we are going to defend U.S. national security. We are going to respond when attacked. 
Now, it's, it's interesting that you bring up um, some of the issues that President Trump campaign, campaigned on, uh, because one of the things that his critics are clearly pointing out is how he spoke of bringing home the military. Um, and following the attack at the embassy in Baghdad, um, the, you had to deploy more people, uh, 3,000 more, I believe. Uh, so it's actually going against what he had originally promised. How do you respond to that? Well, listen, you have to respond to international events as they occur. Mm -hmm. And while the overall goal is not to be involved in as many, in, 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 in myriad international incidents every time something arises, we will defend ourselves if attacked. And yeah. so certainly when there was that, that, that vicious attack on the embassy compound in Baghdad, mm -hmm. there was an effort to defend. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that our folks at the embassy uh, the security forces were able to fire tear gas. Nobody was killed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was no live fire that happened. So again, it's to say, we are going to protect ourselves. Yeah. The goal is not to hurt others. Mm -hmm. you know, in the end, after two days, they withdrew. Um, and, uh, and we'll have some rebuilding to do there. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, you know, the president is clear that we will protect U.S. national security interests mm -hmm. if that means for a time being, we need to increase our presence as a deterrent, then we will do that. Yeah. The, the, the Iranian leader also went on record to say that the attack on his general was actually an act of terrorism on the part of the U.S. and that there was no uh, evidence that he actually uh, stirred the, the pot in terms of striking uh, the U.S. Embassy. Uh, is there any truth to that? Or how do you respond to that being called an act of terrorism uh, from the U.S.? We targeted somebody who was a, uh, a, 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 a sinister mastermind of chaos. Mm. You know, that is who General Soleimani was. That's what he was doing in Iraq. That's what he's been doing around the region. Loved We've by everybody. That. Loved We've by everybody in that, that area. Uh, uh, I, I, I won't speak to that, but, um, but certainly he was sowing chaos there. Mm -hmm. And it was determined for a long time that he was responsible for various acts of terrorism through the region. Mm -hmm. And so he was targeted. And that was a specific uh, effort to remove him from the playing field mm -hmm. because he was a sinister mastermind behind a lot of these attacks. Mm -hmm. Understanding all of that, when you look at the response since uh, he was assassinated, and you see the crowds of people in the streets, and you see just all the emotions um, that, that have been coming out following that. They're calling him a martyr. Um, and in fact, uh, quite a number of, in fact, the people who are there supporting him are speaking of, of seeking revenge as well. How do, you, how do you view that in context of responding? Listen, we globally always face certain threats. And so you know, we have to provide protection uh, for ourselves. Our goal is, again, a world that is prosperous, that is democratic, that is peaceful, that is free. And that's what we'll continue to do. Yeah. Uh, if we have to take actions in defense of that, we will. Um, but, but frankly, at the end of the day, he was not a, uh, somebody that we wanted to see continue yeah. uh, being able to stir the chaos that he was. Mm. Now, some of the interesting um, information that came out after last night, and, and I wanted to get your perspective on it. Um, the attack that Iran made on the two bases in Iraq uh, used... The one yesterday. Yesterday, yep. yes. Uh, that used ballistic me uh, missiles. Uh, its information has come forward saying that there was advanced warning that the attack was going to take place. And in fact, there was sufficient time for the U.S. troops that were there in the area to be able to seek shelter. Um, so it almost seemed that they were trying to avoid any casualties mm -hmm. in this particular attack. Do you share the same view? Uh, I, I, I can't speak for Iranian intentions, and I don't have any particular information other than, than what you've seen in the media. I haven't been, been privy to any of that since, since last night. Um, but certainly, you know, if, if they have said that they are not interested, that that, that, that is their proportional response, mm -hmm. um, then again, hopefully what we see is a de-escalation. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, and how about, um, I mean, how concerned are you that uh, while they did say that this is a proportional response, which means they feel that they have avenged uh, the killing of their general, mm -hmm. um, but if the U.S. responds, their next step would be uh, mm -hmm. seeking further action in Dubai, and also UAE. in Israel. Mm -hmm. 
So Iran has been a state sponsor of terrorism for many, many years. Yeah. So it continues to do that, whether it's uh, you know, Houthi rebels in Yemen, whether it's their actions in Syria and other places. Um, the goal of our interaction with Iran is for them to end their nuclear program and not become, you know, not, you know, have a nuclear bomb, to stop their escapades in the region, fighting proxy wars. I mean, join the country of nations, join, yeah. join yeah. the world of nations. But the president has said the Iranian people are smart, they're hardworking, they're innovative. We don't have a problem with that. We would love to have yeah. mm -hmm. better relations with Iran. But there are certain things that the Iranian government has to stop doing to join the, the, the world of nations. And, and that's the goal that we seek. Mm -hmm. So my question is more geared towards the fact that um, in the response that the U.S. chooses to make or has done in the past, what the message from Iran is saying is that the impact will go beyond just responding to the country that engages them um, and being able to seek damage or loss of life in countries that are not involved in this conflict. That's nothing new for Iran. So for them to say we would, we would expend this to, to other parts of the world is no surprise that's the kind of activity that Iran engages in mm. that we would like them not to. Again, I can't get ahead of the president yeah. and how he's going to respond, mm -hmm. um, but our responses are always proportional and intended to yeah. de-escalate. And so just to follow up on that, it does, though, bring into focus that the consequences of decisions made by America in what they will and will not engage in with Iran has impacts beyond just what may happen on uh, American soil or in uh, bases that houses American troops or, or employees. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the international world that we live in. You know, implications are not limited just within certain borders, certain political constructs. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is overall seeking for peace and stability and prosperity. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's funny that uh, we're having this conversation and the president have not, or President Trump have not uh, come out to say anything as yet or not that we know of. And so this is the reason why we've got all these questions, and you know, <laughs> and we understand that you're not able to go, uh, you know, speak on on some things, not knowing what his response yeah. is at this particular point. But let's talk uh, Belize U.S. Uh, relations, mm -hmm. which of course is international relations. Uh, what are some of the things that we're working forward, working on to move forward with uh, close ties with the U.S. that we've got going on? Right. Yeah. You know, I, I always say there is such an affinity between. The, the, the people of Belize and the people of the United States. I mean, when we've got a population of approximately 30,000 Americans who live here in Belize, yeah. a, mix yeah. of, a mix of retirees, a mix of, of folks that came down as tourists and said they love it so much they're not leaving. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, nearly every Belizean family has some American relative. Mm. And yeah. so, 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 I mean, that's a fantastic thing. So there are a whole, whole range of areas. We share so many values, so there are things we're able to work on. You know, as I'm looking forward to, to 2020 uh, and, and, and what we can help uh, accomplish here, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, one of the big ones is to help reduce the transshipment of drugs through Belize. Mm -hmm. But so now that I've said, you know, to deal with the drug problem, you have to deal with the production of it, you have to deal with the distribution and shipment of it, and you have to deal with the consumption. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at, on all those things. Yeah. Our engagement with Belize is focused on the transshipment of it, mm. of course. and so so we're looking to to increase you know Belize's presence in our uh, um, we've got it's called the Joint Interagency Task Force in okay. Key West. They're the ones that are able to track the planes that are moving. Yeah. You know Belize um, should be relatively soon stationing a person there, a liaison officer, to have access so we can get that information back yeah. and forth mm. um, and help combat drugs. We're looking to ensure that while migration is an issue for Central America, it mm -hmm. has not been an issue for Belize. We want to make sure that any policies that we have for um, returning uh, asylum seekers to other countries in Central yeah. America does not have an impact on Belize. We want to make sure that those folks aren't stationed anywhere near Belize's border so they start passing through Belize. You know, Belize is a great partner in that area. Yeah. And of course, Belize has a wonderful partner in Taiwan. And that's a relationship that we again want to to support yeah. because I think that's you know Belize is an important bulwark against Chinese economic aggression and debt trap diplomacy. I wanna I wanna step back just a bit because you spoke of what is to come in the future in terms of having um, assist Belize in whether it is uh, intervening in uh, the transshipment of drugs or preventing. 
um, the the future action is to have someone placed at Key West to, to kind of liaise with Belize. Mm -hmm. But what has been done so far? Because this year we saw, I think this is perhaps the most uh, planes that we have found in country um, or reports of landings that were, weren't um, intercepted mm -hmm. um, just in one year alone. 2019, I'm sorry, not mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, uh, you know, when I was coming down here uh, in, in mid-2018, there had not been a single significant interdiction of a plane carrying drugs in yeah. many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I commend the work of the Anti-Narcotics Unit and the Belize Defense Force and the Belize National Police mm -hmm. for everything they did in 2019. It was a banner year for interdiction of drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, the folks that are moving these drugs, if they find, they will test every reach, every place they can go. Mm -hmm. And if they find that, that there's a permissive environment and they're able to move drugs, they will. Yeah. But again, the interdictions were way up. Um, I don't know that the number of planes has increased, but certainly they're being found. There's better response. Yeah. And that is to the credit of the Belizean security forces. Mm -hmm. Now, we help. You know, if we're able to provide some information, if we're able to provide training, those sorts of things, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're happy to do that, and we want to continue doing that. But it's to the credit of the Belize security forces that they have managed to interdict so many planes. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a matter of perspective because oftentimes these planes are found after they've been abandoned and yeah. burned and, and no person or drug cargo is found. It's tough. I mean, this is, you know, when you've got a country with less than or around 400,000 people in, you know, what we say is about the size of New Jersey, yeah. it is hard to move folks around. I mean, there's a, you know, according to UN standards, Belize has the appropriate number of police. But for 400,000 people, you think, you know, having 20, uh, 2,200, 2,100 police is about right for mm -hmm. a city. This is a country of 400,000 people. So it is hard to move folks around. So when those yeah. planes are coming in, it is based on, on information to be able to get the forces there. Yeah. Having an officer up in Blue Creek, if a plane's coming in, you know, listen, I wouldn't tell that officer, go try and take down that plane, because mm -hmm. chances are you're going to be facing some serious firepower from the other side. Definitely. So... So to get the information, to be able to move folks around, they're doing a much better job yeah. at it. But it is challenging. Yeah. And I think that, that, that you touched a point, I think that a lot of people in the public and in, in viewing what's been happening of recent um, can't seem to, to understand. It, you don't have to gather intelligence. You don't have to work in security forces to just know that there are hot spots in this country. There are areas that what we have always seen, or especially of recent, we see this type of activity. I always say, if you put up the mat and you put all where, where the planes were found, you know exactly where it's happening. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, and so the question from the public has always been, well, why aren't we stationed there? Why mm -hmm. don't we have? Now, that's not your question to answer. My question to you is, is looking at being able uh, to uh, allow for partnerships or investments? Is there a plan to be able to perhaps assist the security forces in outfitting uh, posts in these areas yeah. mm -hmm. where intervention can be more likely? Yeah, we do provide a tremendous amount of, of security assistance yeah. in the whole range, whether it's uh, you know vests to help protect police officers when they're going on these raids or information. And in fact, as you say, there are hot spots, yeah. and, and the Belizean government has responded. The security yeah. forces are moving people yeah. to those areas. Um, but again, if you're a drug trafficker, you're also smart, and you're innovating, um, and you're figuring out, okay, well, if that's the hot spot, I'm going to go somewhere else. And the challenge is there are a lot of different places mm -hmm. that, that they can land planes. And when the volume of money is so great that they say, we don't even have to be able to take that plane back off again. Yeah. We're going to land it, and we're just going to burn it. Right, yeah. Um, it, this is a challenge, yeah. um, but it's one that we continue to cooperate on, and mm -hmm. I'd like to see greater success. To not just say, you, you, you know, people often say you can't interdict your way out of a drug problem. Yeah. But if you can use the information gathered from the interdictions to go after the networks, that's the key part. And that's where we also then can help because we've got the relations with Mexico, we've got mm -hmm. the relations with Guatemala, we've got the relations with Honduras to try and tie all that together. Yeah. And I think. Belize's actions to engage more with its neighbors. Yeah. I mean, fantastic cooperation that Belize yeah. has with Mexico mm -hmm. on interdicting uh, drugs. So, you know, that sort of thing will continue where we can help, we want to. But again, it will be a Belizean solution to this problem mm -hmm. where we can help, we will. Excellent. Well, 
Let's, let's uh, venture off into uh, Belize US uh, relations with respect to tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the situation uh, coming up there, New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's, uh, whereby we had Key Cocker without water. We had um, Key Cocker without electricity for, for a mm -hmm. while. Uh, is there any response from the, US, from the US embassy or the US government with respect to having their people coming over? Because we know when it comes to the influx of tourism, uh, there are a lot of US citizens that comes here to enjoy this mm -hmm. beautiful country. Is there any words from you guys in terms of you know, dealing sure. with that situation? Sure. Well, I like to think that I'm doing my part. Uh, you I've are. got friends you arriving <laughs> in a week. They're staying for a couple of weeks. We'll be down in Placencia. My family's coming back in February. My dad will be here for three weeks. So Excellent. certainly Excellent. we're trying to do, uh, the, uh, my, my family is trying to do all it can to, to help tourism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen, Belize continues to be a fantastic destination for U.S. tourists to come, and I believe the numbers, you know, were up in 2019 over 2018, mm -hmm. and the vast majority of those are folks coming in on cruise ships. Um, but yeah, there are challenges anytime you are expanding with tourism. Yeah. There are resource yeah. challenges, and but I think Belize is doing a good and smart job to say, let's not just go big, let's go smart. Yeah. And, and, and to develop the, 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 um, the tourism opportunities for folks to ensure that they're safe. You know, we, 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 you know accidents can happen, and we, of course, yeah. saw the tragedy late last year yeah. involving cruise ship passengers. And, yeah. you know, I went to visit those folks in the hospital the next day, and, and, and it's tragic and sad. And there were three, three Belizeans who were neighbors of, of ours in Belmopan yeah. oh, wow. who, were also, who were also killed in that accident. Um, but again, overall, I think Belize has a great product to sell yeah. in its yeah. incredible properties and in its incredible wildlife and biodiversity, and, uh, and you know, and I'm, I'm I'm sure Americans will continue to flock down here. Certainly, yeah. my family does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and one of the areas I know that that the U.S. has uh, had very good relations with Belize. It does go back to security, is looking at addressing the crime situation. Um, we've seen, luckily, um, a lot of the crime. I shouldn't say luckily. But uh, as of late, the, the crime is more focused on, on local issues and domestic issues. Um, but there have been instances where tourists have lost their lives. Uh, there have been victims of not necessarily homicides, but it could be home invasions, um, American nationals, that is. Uh, talk to me about how you work to be able to help to protect the citizens that do reside here or visit. Yeah, obviously, U.S. citizen security is the top priority. You know, when I was going through my training class back a couple of years ago, they said, you know, if the OIG, if the inspector general ever comes to you and says, what's your number one priority? And if, if I respond, maintaining the bilateral relations with the host country and all that sort of stuff, they're yeah. going to say, wrong, <laughs> your number one um, priority is to protect U.S. citizens. Of so course. we'll continue to do that. But we do that in cooperation. You know, yeah. We're not going to be able to do that on our own. Yeah. But if we're able to help build the capacity of the police to respond to crime, um, build the prosperity so that people have jobs, so they're not interested in crime, yeah. all that. I mean, that, that's part of our sort of the three-legged stool of good governance, economic prosperity, and citizen security. Yeah. And we focus a lot on the citizen security component, whether it's grants we're giving to local organizations, yeah. whether it's our cooperation with the police or the police defense force. Mm -hmm. So that's always key. Um, and we do have to tell the story. So if, if there are incidents, we have to, to, to warn American tourists to worry about that. So it is a concern. Mm -hmm. if, if tourists are attacked, if they're robbed, whatever else, that becomes a blemish on Belize as a destination. Mm -hmm. yeah. But overall, given the vast number of tourists that come here, yeah. I, I, you know, we say exercise, increased caution, yeah. but visit Belize. Yeah, Lovely. yeah. It's it's such a it's such a touchy you know that's that's the concern with um, having a tourism product that's so vital to us because it only takes one or one incident every now and again um, to really have a devastating impact. Um, but going back to it in terms of working with forces in in technical. Um, Training. I know that uh, I'm, I'm thinking back on some of the particular cases where the FBI came in. There still wasn't any resolution um, in in being able to solve the murders. So we're seeing mm -hmm. where we have challenges in intelligence gathering or in investigating crimes. Um, I know there's some cooperation that takes place there mm -hmm. as well. Talk to us about that. Well, you know, we're starting a series of three three-week investigation courses. So we've got a former superintendent of police, Willie Parnell, who's been here for a while, yeah. been here for years, in fact, working on improving investigation. He's running a course 
starting this month for three weeks, and mm -hmm. I think we've got 90 different police officers that'll be going through that. Yeah. They're off for a couple wow. weeks, then it's another three week course, they're off for a couple weeks, then it's another three week course mm -hmm. to really give them the tools and the skills. Um, and it comes down to, listen, we can provide that, that training. Ultimately, it becomes in, uh, incumbent upon the investigator not to say, hey, I've done everything that I was taught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, I've ticked every box that I was given. I'm not sure what to do next. I don't know either, but get out there and figure it out. You yeah. don't stop until you've turned over every leaf, until you've done what you can. Yeah. And again, we can provide the tools, but yeah. it is up to, to Belizeans to figure out, okay, that was useful to me, we're going to use that, and we're going to solve these crimes. Yeah. 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 And uh, while, while we're on the topic of education, the U.S. Belize international ties, and the educational aspect, working along with the schools, can you expand mm -hmm. on anything, if there is anything going on? You know, I had a great opportunity to go to uh, one of the schools out in, in Benke. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the police run something called the Gang Resistance Education and Training yeah, the Course. Program. The Great Program, yeah. which is a great program. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I've had an opportunity to, to participate in the graduation ceremonies a couple times now. Yeah. But I thought, well, hey, I'm not actually in the schools. You know, yeah. I want to see these police officers at work. Yeah. And I went to the school in Benke, and it was fantastic and having the police in there. And it's not just about what they're teaching and how they're engaging with these young students. Yeah. It's that they are engaging. It's yeah. that they're a presence in the school to say, we want to cooperate. You know, if something's happening, we're the police, you can come to us yeah. for, for safety and security. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a fantastic opportunity to get into the schools and, uh, and, and participate in that program. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up, though, we do have a couple more issues to discuss. Um, one in looking at U.S. relations beyond just with Belize. Um, next week, actually, the new president, Guatemala, takes over, and we know that uh, the U.S. and uh, President Jimmy Morales, the outgoing president, was able to, make up a, uh, to strike up a deal on being a safe third country. The incoming president has said that he's not sure that uh, that's a deal that he will want to follow through with. The migration issue, while perhaps not uh, as, as talked about as it once was, is still an issue for mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. um, what are the indications as to what may happen there? If it I, goes through or doesn't go through? I, I, I have to be a little careful. So I've got colleagues in Guatemala who deal with the Guatemalan relationship. Yeah. And if they hear that the Chargé in Belize <laughs> is talking about U.S. relations with Guatemala, I'm going to get in trouble with yeah. them. <laughs> so, so I don't want to speak to that. But listen, we have good relations. But in helping us understand what the deal is meant to do. Because so the uh, Asylum Cooperation Agreement, the mm -hmm. ACA, mm -hmm. is one where we say, listen, rather than have all these asylum applicants you know, sitting at the, at the U.S. border, they can be ro relocated to other countries. So if they didn't feel safe in Honduras, they could be located in Guatemala. Yeah. So that's a program. It's unfolding. You know, we have seen the first returnees come to Guatemala. Again, my interest in that issue yeah. is ensuring that U.S. policymakers understand what those issues, you know, what, what that policy, the impact it can have on Belize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and my big one is to say, let's make sure that if they do create an asylum camp, it is not anywhere on the eastern half of Guatemala, yeah. because we don't want those folks then saying, well, our best pathway rather than north into Mexico is through mm -hmm. Belize into Mexico. So again, I make sure that I'm carrying that yeah. message back to Washington. We're letting them know, yeah. yes, as you're putting these agreements in place, here's the impact it could have on Belize. Let's not let that happen. So yeah. being preventative and not having these asylum seekers come into Belize if they've been relocated to yeah. Guatemala. My understanding was that there was some effort to possibly locate a camp somewhere in the Paten. Okay. And so my job is to go back to Washington and say, okay, Washington, in your engagements with your other bilateral partners mm -hmm. like Guatemala, make sure that their decisions they're making don't have this negative side effect. And, yeah. and so far, we have been successful in that. And so Paten is still the preferred site? Uh, not for us. OK. But there's been no decision made as to where it would be? We know that an effort to have planes fly into the airport in Paten, we've said that's a, that's a non-starter. Okay. And so those flights continue to fly into Guatemala City. Okay. And, and we do not support uh, the location of, of, of an asylum camp anywhere 
anywhere near Belize. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And uh, finally, before we close, there are big things happening in, in the United States. Uh, we just recently had the impeachment, and um, it, it somehow has uh, clearly what's happening with Iran. It's not as talked about, but um, I'd love to get your perspective in terms of what the messaging coming out of uh, your, your office is in helping people understand what the impeachment means. So, you know, when you started the program, you talked about withholding. So clearly, you're not withholding any questions from me. 